Hello, iOS fans, Robin here again. Uh, I've got to say it's slightly different to you uh, for usual. It's, it's been my intention in 2018 to do more video uh, reviews of games. Um, and I've pretty much failed to do that since I've uh, had that intention. So I'm going to try and do a quick run through of a couple of games for you. Now, I'm not going to do a proper in depth uh, playthrough. If you'd like that at the end of the video, please put in the comments uh, you'd like to see that. I haven't done it. I don't know how. Uh, well, they're watched and I do know there are some very professional outfits out there who do it So I, I haven't done it. If you'd like to see it from me, then let me know. Otherwise, I should just uh, treat you to this So this is a couple of guys from Osprey Games uh, who make lots of interesting little games as well as they do some uh, Kind of book rules for skirmish games like uh, Frostgrave and the uh, Frostgrave Archipelago uh, Ghost Archipelago and all sorts of other interesting um, skirmish games um, which there's a guy on, on Geek Dad who, who likes those so do check those out have a look on Geek Dad and search skirmish games he writes a lot about those um, but these are just board games uh, and there's two and they're both Japanese inspired one of them I think is either just about to come out or has just come out the other one came out last year so the two games are Sakura by uh, Rainer Kinesia he's one of the sort of big uh, board game designer and that's his newest one that's the new one that's just come out that is, I say, it's from Osprey Games. That one is priced 30 US dollars or about 20 pounds. And the other one is Samurai Gardener, um, which is uh, made by somebody called Hishashi Hayashi. Um, so, uh, and that one I think is 20 US or about 15 pounds. So, let's have a look at these. We'll start with Samurai. Well, we'll start with Sakura. So Sakura, a uh, nice little box. Uh, one of the things I love about. Um, Osprey games as they are really good quality for, you know this I love the small games they do great small games I did one called Shahrazad last year which was one of my uh, games of the year and um, they're, they're small but they're beautifully formed these Osprey games so this one is Sakura and um, as you might have noticed with a quick flash up this has a gardening theme they both have a gardening theme these games so this is the board it's a little board it's for two to six players, this game. So it has quite a nice device here where these bridges are just one space if you're playing with two two to four players. And if you're playing with five and six players, they become three spaces. It's quite, quite like that. That's quite clever. So it's a very nice, short, compact board. Uh, some nice pawn pieces and a uh, emperor, which I can't get out of the box. The emperor here. And a deck of cards. That's basically, there's a few counters for keeping score uh, and a deck of cards. And the idea is that you are painters and you're trying to win favour with the Emperor by painting the best picture, but uh, you want to get as close to him as possible. But if you touch him, then obviously all hell breaks loose and uh, that's really, really bad and you lose face and all that sort of thing. So you mustn't touch the Emperor. So the Emperor moves down here and you follow him. And then at each of these points, um, it's like a they're like checkpoints. Like if you played Takedo, uh, the checkpoints like Takedo. Everybody, when the Emperor gets here, everybody takes stock and you get points awarded depending on how close you are at each of these points um, and you start here and you go around so the way movement works is through cards so each player gets five cards at the beginning of the game um, and on the cards they have various symbols now the symbols are mean different things and in, in the simplest form so the top symbol is what you do on the emperor's move turn and the bottom symbol is what you do on the player's move turn so this one uh, plus two well, that's not a very good one. If it's got a if it's got a gate on it like that, then um, you uh, can move the emperor one or plus plus a plus or minus one. There's some with plus one, some with plus or minus one. So if this is a plus or minus one. Um, so you can either move the emperor forward or you can move it backwards. So you can move the emperor back into your opponents, or they can move it back into you. Uh, this one, this red triangle, means you move the person who is at the back two squares. So the person who could be you if you're at the back. Um, you move forward two squares, so closer to the emperor, and then you move yourself another three squares. So you could, in theory, move five squares that go. So you each have a hand of these cards, which have, there's only about five different symbols at each, so there's different combinations, but not that much you can do. And it's generally move, move the person at the front backwards or the person at the behind forwards, or move yourself a number of squares, and the emperor move in a couple of different directions. And there are a couple of ones that enable you to jump over people or swap, swap them out. Um, but that's, that's all there is to it. So there's only about, I think there's about five combinations of each 
thing, and then on each card, each card also has a number in the bottom corner. And this number is the order in which they're resolved. So, um, a bit like King Domino, uh, where the numbers, if you've played that, the numbers, the lowest number resolves first, but they're not normally quite so good. Haven't quite worked out whether these are best cards are necessarily better or not, but it just means you have to think a little bit about what you're doing. This card here, you see, will move the person at the back, but it's a number 58. There's only 60 cards, and so you're unlikely to be playing that last. So by the time it's your go, you might not be at the back, in which case you'll be moving your opponent forwards. Uh, and that's the neat trick of the game. You resolve them in the order in which the, of this number. So by the time you go, if you're at the end, the situation could be completely different. The Emperor could have moved back three spaces and you walk straight into him. And it's a really neat little game. If you do walk into him, you're made to move backwards three. That's the only uh, bad thing, which obviously means it's less likely that you'll get closer to him at the end. Oh, and you lose one of your honor points or something. So you collect those as you go around at each, each of these way stations and then you lose them if you hit the Emperor as well as going backwards. So it's a bit of a double whammy, but it doesn't unbalance the game. And that's simply it. That's pretty much it. Uh, you, so you each have five cards, you each play one, and then you each draw one at the end. So you, you cycle through the cards slowly, and when all the cards have gone, um, you reshuffle. But when the Emperor reaches the end, uh, and then that's the end of the game, you count up the score. And that is it, and it's a really lovely, quick, simple game to play. I've played it with my uh, nine-year-old and my 12-year-old, and they both really enjoyed it. Uh, and it's really fun, and it looks great, it looks great. The car stock is good, the board is good. It's pretty portable, so you could play it on the move, although probably not, well, actually moving, so counters and the dice. But it's, uh, it's a good game. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, look out for that. Um, so it's fun, it's, I love the different competing strategies of, you know, you, I want that car, but it doesn't play until the end. I kind of like that. Uh, that element of the game and it's got a push your luck element too. you know, get as close as you can without messing it up so it's kind of combines a lot of popular game uh, mechanics into one neat little box game which I really like it's so very reminiscent of Takaigo has similar things to Gravwell if you've ever played Gravwell and it's not too dissimilar to King Domino in its resolution either so that's that one Samurai Gardener is a bit more like uh, kind of Domino's uh, I guess it's not really like dominoes, but it's a, it's a tile laying game rather than actually cards. So the Samurai Gardener is a really nice little game. You, you have these um, cards which you can lay down, so you can lay them over and you have to score different, so you can put these together to say score um, three pond features, but then you have to turn your pond card down uh, face down and, until, they, until you've got all of them and you can turn them all back up, so you wouldn't be able to score any more pond cards until um, until your pawn card is f your own personal pawn card is face, face turned face up. Each player gets four of the cards for each of the four type of segments. And as the board gets bigger, you might have chances to score five or six length pieces. And if your card's been turned over, you can't do it. And you can even, if you can uh, manufacture it, you can even score multiple types of card simultaneously. So it's a really nice nifty game. It has got an element of it I don't really like. Uh, it's not my type of thing. At the beginning, you're meant to sort of say, I, 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 and then all go for the card that you want. So the, the next cards that are played are laid. So the cards to be played are, are turned up face up, and you can all go one for each player, and you can all go for it. Now, I don't really like that. It doesn't work. It didn't work with our children. It caused distress because some of them are quicker than others. So we tended to just take it in turns to, to pick, and it, the game worked very well indeed. Uh, especially if you don't allow very long to actually pick, it's rather sort of like you know, pick, well, go. No, but but it, if you, somebody gets the first turn, and that, that that worked fine. Don't let somebody deliberate hours over which is the best one to take because that will slow the game down and make it less fun. But if you kind of say, well, you you know, you get first pick, but only for like an extra second, then it works just just pretty well. So that's Samurai Gardener. I think of the two, I prefer Sakura, uh, but the Samurai Gardener is a little cheaper and, and and it's more fun and in some ways it's less uh, less tactical and a bit more, uh, say, a bit more fun, a bit more like Noughts and Crosses or something like that. Um, so they are two great games from uh, Osprey. Um, I hope you found this useful. Uh, I hope you, if you hadn't heard of the games, do check them out. Um, I say they're, they're lovely games and Osprey games are always uh, top-notch quality. So just like I say, I hope you found that useful and uh, I'll see you next time. I do hope to do more of these uh, as and when I can. Um, if you want more details, on, on Samurai Gardener or uh, Sakura, then do say so in the comments. If you'd like a full playthrough, do say so in the comments. And if there's any games that you like, then do let us know, and I'll maybe I'll maybe I can have a look at that on camera too. That would be great. Until next time, then Age of Sigma fans, take care. Bye.